I think my coworker may be having an affair with my wife, and it's starting to seem true. I'm a 36-year-old man, and in 2014, I had a chance encounter with my now wife, who is 32 years old, at a local mall. Let's call her Gabby. Gabby was waiting in line at the food court when I first laid eyes on her. Interestingly, I had initially intended to dine at a different restaurant, but the line there was too long. So, I joined the line at the restaurant where Gabby was standing. When our eyes met, I was taken aback by how stunning she looked. Upon seeing me, Gabby chuckled and explained that she wasn't in line for food. She mentioned that her cousin worked at the restaurant, and she was simply waiting for her cousin to finish her shift. I was overjoyed that she spoke to me because I was struggling to come up with something to say. Thanks to her friendly approach, I managed to break the ice with humor, and we engaged in conversation while she awaited her cousin. It was clear that I was leaving a positive first impression on her. As she waited for her cousin, I offered to buy her some food, but Gabby expressed a preference for a strawberry lemonade instead. I purchased it for her, and our conversation continued with me maintaining a playful and humorous demeanor. When her cousin eventually emerged, I took the opportunity to ask for Gabby's phone number, and she gladly shared it with me before they left. From that point on, I made every effort to sweep her off her feet. After going on several dates, attending events, and socializing with her and my friends alongside her friends, we officially became a couple in 2017. Gabby and I tied the knot, and as time went by, we became parents to three wonderful kids, two daughters, and our son is in the middle. Over the years, we've grown into being excellent parents for our children. It hasn't been easy, but we made the choice to cut back on going out to clubs and concerts, though we still managed to find occasional moments of fun. Our nightlife definitely took a back seat. I've always felt fortunate to have Gabby as my wife. Her personality is fantastic, and her stunning looks even earned me compliments from my friends. Gabby is of Cuban descent, and her appearance is a mix between the actress who portrayed Wonder Woman and Salma Hayek. She has a curvaceous figure, arm tattoos, and is known for her signature ponytail, especially in her selfies. Financially, we're in a comfortable position. I work as a maintenance man, and Gabby, along with her sister, works as interior decorators, bringing in good income. Her sister is the interior designer, and Gabby joined the profession when she saw its success. I've been dedicated to my job for seven years. Little did I expect that someone from my workplace would cause trouble in my marriage. The issue started last Wednesday. There's a guy in the shipping department, let's call him Daryl. While we're not close friends, I consider him an acquaintance, and we occasionally chat during lunch breaks. The most time I've spent with him was probably when we played dice in the parking lot at work. Our interactions mainly revolve around basketball discussions during lunch. One weekend, my car had brake issues, preventing me from driving to work. So, my wife graciously offered to drop me off and pick me up after my shift. The first time she came a bit early and had to wait around 30 minutes for me to finish. During that time, she struck up a conversation with Daryl, a co-worker, and another colleague I'll call Brianna. After introducing her as my wife, we engaged in some casual chit-chat before heading home. Looking back, that moment might have been the starting point of it all. I suspect that Daryl may have started getting close to my wife during that week when she had to pick me up from work. Whenever I finished my shift, I'd often find my wife hanging out with Daryl and Brianna. They would be in the office enjoying some rap music through Daryl's Beats by Dre headphones connected to his phone. Gabby mentioned that she enjoyed talking to Brianna and would spend time in the office with her and Daryl. Since I knew that Brianna and Daryl lived close to each other and were good friends, I didn't initially feel uneasy about his presence around them. Following that week, Gabby started coming to my workplace to socialize with Daryl and Brianna. Given that Brianna was supposed to be my wife's friend, I didn't mind her visiting or chatting on the phone. However, I somewhat overlooked Daryl being consistently present and engaging in conversations with Gabby. My wife received a lot of attention, particularly on Instagram. So I tried to keep any concerns in check, even when I saw her talking to Daryl without Brianna around. 
I didn't want to jump to conclusions and risk upsetting Gabby, leading to daily arguments in Spanish. It was last Wednesday when my concerns about my wife's potential infidelity began to surface. On that day, as I was leaving my workplace, I bid farewell to a colleague. He happened to be on the phone at the time and also said goodbye. What caught my attention was the way he mentioned my name, as if the person on the other end of the line knew me. So I inquired about who he was speaking to, and he responded with a smile, mentioning it was an old co-worker of ours. He then asked me to wait for a moment, saying that this individual wanted to have a quick chat with me. He handed me the phone, and I was actually glad to reconnect with this guy. In my conversation with this former co-worker, whom I'll refer to as Tyrell, we reminisced about our past work experiences and why he had left. He explained that his brother worked in a warehouse in Atlanta, and Tyrell had relocated there after his brother promised a job, playfully mentioning that he now earned more than us. After our catch-up, Tyrell expressed that he wanted to talk to me about something important and requested my phone number. I agreed, and he instructed me to send him my number via Facebook direct message, DM. I complied and returned my friend's phone immediately after I sent him my number. Tyrell called me even before I had reached my car. I answered the call and asked him what was going on. He inquired if I was in my car, and I confirmed that I was. He then urged me not to start driving because he had something significant to share. This raised my curiosity, so I pressed him for more details. He replied, emphasizing that I couldn't disclose what he was about to tell me to anyone, and I agreed to keep it confidential. He inquired about whether Gabby still visited my workplace, and this took me by surprise. I replied affirmatively, and he further inquired about whether Daryl was still conversing with Gabby. Again, I confirmed this, and his persistent questioning made me uneasy. He assured me he didn't want to stir up trouble, but believed Daryl had an interest in my wife. Since he no longer worked with us, he didn't care and felt it was important for me to be aware of this. Hearing this sent a shiver down my spine. I questioned him about how he knew this, and he disclosed that he had witnessed their interactions during his time working with us. Tyrell held a leadership position and moved between different departments. He mentioned that while walking around, he often observed Gabby and Daryl engaged in conversations. Additionally, he had informed our co-workers that he desired Gabby, and he also made comments about her appearance. I probed further, asking Tyrell when he typically saw them together. He explained that it was usually about an hour before lunch, while he occasionally saw Gabby talking to Brianna. She conversed with Daryl more frequently. Tyrell indicated that it wasn't until she started visiting him on Saturdays, particularly when Daryl's department had to work overtime, that he suspected something might be happening. This revelation surprised me because I rarely worked overtime, making it unclear why she would be there. I inquired of Tyrell if he was certain about Gabby's Saturday visits, and he affirmed his certainty. He mentioned he was quite convinced that Daryl might be getting closer to her during one particular Saturday visit. Given the limited activities on Saturdays, they had a surplus of free time, and Daryl frequently played his beats by Dre Music Speaker, even with Gabby present. This seemed typical to Tyrell. However, after some time, he returned with news that he had heard loud Spanish music playing. Upon closer inspection, Tyrell described the situation as becoming intimate between Gabby and the guys. According to him, Daryl had a hold of Gabby by her neck while she engaged in twerking for him. Although my wife didn't possess an extremely curvaceous figure, she had enough to engage in twerking if she chose. I was left in shock when Tyrell shared this with me. I sought confirmation by asking if he was absolutely certain, and he responded firmly, emphasizing that he was not visually impaired. He recounted that everyone watched as she danced provocatively for Daryl, even mentioning that he lifted her shirt to reveal her backside through her leggings. I then asked whether she attempted to halt Daryl's advances, to which he replied in the negative. According to Tyrell, all she did was laugh and continue dancing for him, almost as if she were trying to win a competition. I struggled to believe the information Tyrell was sharing. He expressed his regrets and advised me to keep my wife away from him, including Brianna. I thanked him for sharing all of this with me and concluded our conversation. 
Shortly thereafter, I felt deeply embarrassed and humiliated by the situation. As I drove back home, my mind was filled with tumultuous thoughts. What bothered me even more was that Gabby's twerking incident with Daryl had occurred about seven or eight months ago. Who knows what may have transpired since then. They might have taken their rendezvous to his place, and she could have done more than just dance. I realized that I needed to confront Gabby and see if she would be forthcoming with the truth. Upon arriving home, I found my wife engrossed in a phone conversation with her mom. After some casual chatter, I asked her if she had met with Brianna today, to which she responded affirmatively. I then inquired about whether she had seen Daryl, and she replied in the negative. I expressed my surprise, mentioning that they seemed inseparable, like the three musketeers. She claimed that Daryl wasn't around much, which I knew was a blatant falsehood. Following this exchange, my wife simply walked past me and into the kitchen to grab her phone, likely to text her friends. I couldn't believe that she had blatantly lied to me about her relationship with Daryl. Even I had observed how often he was around her, and I felt deeply hurt by what seemed increasingly evident. Subsequently, all I could do was watch her prepare dinner for our children while feeling a sense of sadness and despair. My emotions were a volatile mix of anger and teary-eyed sorrow. At this point, I desperately needed concrete evidence that something was indeed happening. However, obtaining such proof would be extremely challenging, given that it involved people I worked with. I couldn't risk losing my job, and Tyrell's account of the twerking incident wouldn't suffice as grounds for divorce. Moreover, they could easily deny it ever occurred. My wife might argue that she was merely delivering lunch to Daryl, and the elderly security guard would likely corroborate her story. I had no choice but to assume that my wife had cheated on me. It was clear that she had secretly met up with Daryl and twerked for him eight months ago. With so much time having passed, I couldn't fathom what might have transpired since then. I needed to figure out how to obtain substantial evidence that could be used in a divorce case, all while treading carefully to safeguard my job and anticipate potential backlash from her family. I will provide an update if I manage to devise a plan of action. Considering the passage of time, I couldn't help but wonder about the nature of her relationship with Daryl at present. While I appreciated Tyrell's honesty in sharing this information, I couldn't help but feel that it may have come too late. I wished he had spoken up at the time, but it appeared that his reluctance to snitch on Daryl had allowed the situation between Daryl and my wife to progress. Upon returning home, I initiated a conversation with Gabby regarding her friendship with Daryl. She claimed that she occasionally spoke to Daryl, but he wasn't usually around, and she primarily conversed with Brianna. I recognized this as a fabrication since I had witnessed their interactions on some occasions. Thanks to Tyrell's revelations, I began to see through the facade. It became apparent that she was using her friendship with Brianna as a pretext to spend time with Daryl. Following my conversation with Tyrell and Gabby's dishonesty concerning her relationship with Daryl, I started to conduct some discreet investigations around the house. Unfortunately, I couldn't access her iPhone due to her secure passcode, and she seemed to be constantly engrossed in conversations with her mom and sister. Instead, I resorted to eavesdropping on her conversations, particularly those that occurred late at night. I noticed that she would often retreat to the back porch to engage in these conversations, prompting me to discreetly listen in. While I couldn't hear the other side of the conversation, some phrases caught my attention, such as stop, you're crazy or mentions of having fun at a specific club in our suburban area. On one occasion, I overheard her saying she can't go over there. I strongly suspected that they referred to Daryl's house, but without the full context, I couldn't be entirely certain. When she returned inside, I questioned her about her phone conversation, and she claimed it was her sister, Brianna, or someone else. However, the giggling and secretive behavior left me unconvinced by her explanation. I must have been oblivious before Tyrell's call because afterward, I noticed several red flags. My wife now always has her phone with her, avoids talking to me, and claims to be busy when I suggest being intimate. She found it funny and said it wouldn't be appropriate with our kids at home. When I questioned why that would stop us, Gabby dismissed me as crazy and told me to leave her alone. She also said she wasn't in the mood. 
These actions, both before and after Tyrell's call, have made me doubt my wife's fidelity, and I wonder how I ever considered this behavior normal. Last Saturday, I believe I caused her to miss an opportunity to be with Daryl, which angered her. After my work shift, Gabby called me while I was driving home. She mentioned her plans to go out again and told me to cook for the kids. I immediately assumed she wanted to meet Daryl, so I lied, saying I had errands to run before returning home. She claimed she was already getting ready to leave and asked her sister to watch the kids, even though I knew that wasn't possible. Despite Gabby trying to guilt me into making her stay home, I reminded her that I have the right to go out and do things, and I might not be back until later. Gabby responded with a dismissive whatever and hung up on me. Later that night, she had an attitude, and when I spoke a few words, she exploded with anger, blaming me for ruining her evening. I told her I didn't care and that my errands were more important than her socializing. Gabby claimed I never mentioned running errands, and I countered by saying she never mentioned her plans to go out. After my shower, I noticed she was on the porch talking on her phone and looking irritated. I'm pretty sure she was discussing me. However, a couple of days ago, things took a turn for the worse. That night after I finished work, Gabby prepared dinner. She entered the bedroom while I was browsing New Jordans on my phone and informed me that dinner was ready. When I arrived in the dining room, she was dressed up, getting ready to go out. I inquired about her plans, and she mentioned she was heading out with some friends, leaving me in charge of the kids. I asked her with whom she was going out, and Gabby simply replied, her friends again. I expressed my concern that she couldn't just leave like that, and she accused me of trying to control her with an attitude. She walked out the door. I was quite upset because I knew what this was all about. She was still upset about the Saturday when she couldn't see Daryl, and she had been visibly sad about it ever since. My wife didn't return until around 2.30 in the morning. Throughout the night, I sent her texts, and her only response was, please stop texting me, which frustrated me. When she finally arrived, I was playing our son's PlayStation, and as soon as I saw her, we began arguing. I questioned why she came home so late, and she simply stated that she was hanging out with her friends, a response I wasn't willing to accept. I pointed out that I was supposed to be in bed, but I stayed up waiting for her to come home. She claimed that I never complained when she came home late in the past, to which I responded that I was always with her, so that argument didn't hold water. She cursed at me and accused me of trying to control her, but I disagreed. After a while, our son came out to see what all the yelling was about, and when he asked what was wrong, Gabby said she wouldn't argue with me anymore and stormed into the bedroom. My son saw the video game running and asked if he could play it. I agreed, but told him it would be just for a little while before he needed to go back to sleep. Once he agreed, he started playing the game while I wanted to continue arguing with Gabby. I wasn't going to let her manipulate me into thinking I was a controlling husband, especially when she was the one who came home late. I usually tried to stay calm, but my suspicions got the best of me. Coming in at 2 a.m. was disrespectful, especially considering how she had left after our argument. We went into our bedroom to continue discussing when she had left. As I entered the bedroom, I was about to argue, but I stopped mid-sentence when I saw something surprising. When I walked in, my wife was undressing, and it looked like she was wearing a black string as underwear. I suppose she thought I would still be with our son because she seemed surprised when I walked in. She just stood there in a piece of string, and I saw her differently. After briefly looking at me, she gave me a look that suggested we would just end up arguing if I asked her anything. She grabbed her pajamas from the bed and decided to change in the bathroom. I couldn't believe what I had just seen, and I have to admit it left me stunned. I decided I would sleep on the couch because it would be awkward. After that, my brain couldn't process what I had witnessed. I had never seen my wife wear such revealing underwear before. It was almost like she was wearing a black string. To be fair, Gabby did own some provocative underwear, but she hadn't worn them in a long time. She liked wearing skimpy swimwear for vacation photos on Instagram, but what she had on was more like something you'd see on a website like Worldstar. At this point, I was convinced that my wife was acting incredibly suspicious and keeping secrets. 
After coming across some advice online, I saw that many suggested recording her saying or doing something incriminating. So, I ordered a voice-activated recording device, V, and planned to place it in her car. I asked a friend if I could use his address for the delivery, and he agreed without asking any questions. I'll pick up the device when it arrives in the mail. The last thing I need is for her to see the package and start questioning me about it. I'm determined to uncover the truth no matter the cost. Thanks to Tyrell, many of my suspicions seem to be on point. After purchasing a voice-activated recording, V, device, I planned to obtain proof, and if it turned out to be real, I intended to seek a divorce. With the V device in hand, I rode with her to the supermarket, hoping to improve our relationship. I thought that if there were issues between us, we could address them, and she would stop seeing Daryl. I told Gabby that it was fine for her to go out with friends, but as a parent, she still had responsibilities to her family. She responded by asserting her independence as a grown woman and accused me of being controlling. She insisted on her right to spend time with her friends and not be confined to the house or work all the time. I mentioned to her that I understood her desire for fun, but her spontaneity was becoming excessive. She wouldn't disclose when or where she was going. Gabby acknowledged this and said she'd be more considerate of me and our family. Following that conversation, she did show more consideration for my feelings, and it felt like we could have a deeper discussion about our relationship. However, that changed when Daryl called a couple of days ago. Initially, I wasn't sure how to handle this, but this afternoon Gabby pushed me to take action. Earlier this week, she mentioned that all our kids wanted to watch a Pixar movie with their older cousins this Saturday. She said she would take them so they could all watch the movie together, which I thought was a great idea as it meant quality time with the kids. When they left a few hours later, I received a call from my nephew. He mentioned that he heard we had a particular video game he wanted to play and asked if he could come over after the movie. I told him that if Gabby was planning to bring him back home after the movie, he could come over and play the game. He was excited and said he would ask Gabby when she came to pick them up after the movie. His statement confused me. I thought Gabby was supposed to watch the movie with them, but he told me Gabby had informed them that she was just going to drop them off. I had slept in a bit that morning, so I wondered if I had misunderstood. However, I distinctly remembered Gabby saying she would watch the movie with the kids, and now I realized it was a lie. It was then that I recalled it was a Saturday, and Terrell had mentioned that Gabby would spend overtime with Daryl on Saturdays. Considering the time, the guys would still be working if it was indeed a Saturday. When I tried to call my wife, she didn't answer the phone, which infuriated me. Following that, I called my workplace and asked the security department if the guys were still working. They confirmed that they were, and I hung up, deeply suspicious of whether Gabby was actually with Daryl. I got in my car and decided to drive to my workplace, knowing I could likely arrive before they left. During the drive, all I could mutter was stupid B and frustration for what she was putting me through. I didn't know what to think, but I was filled with anger. We had discussed this issue before, and I thought she had understood. This time I was determined not to let it slide, especially since she had lied to me. If Daryl was avoiding my wife, I no longer cared. I drove into the parking lot and began searching for her car. I quickly spotted it, and I was already feeling angry. I entered the building and headed down to the shipping dock where Daryl was working. As I walked through the double doors, Daryl's crew jumped up, surprised to see me. They were wearing their jackets, which suggested they were about to leave, until they noticed me scanning the area. I couldn't spot Daryl or Gabby, so I figured they must be in the trucker's lounge. As I was heading in that direction, one of the crew members tried to block me and told me I didn't belong in the building. I warned him to back off, making it clear I wasn't joking and would confront him if necessary. He tried to act tough but didn't budge, indicating he didn't want to fight. Without wasting any more time on him, I proceeded to the trucker's lounge where they had to be. The trucker's lounge used to be a small area where truckers would wait for their trucks to be loaded. A few years ago, they implemented a new rule that required all truck drivers to remain in their trucks and wait until they received their paperwork. 
This rule was meant to prevent theft, although I couldn't fathom why anyone would want to steal the cargo they were shipping. The room was small, with only two vending machines that were no longer operational. I was sure I would find them there, and hearing Daryl's groaning confirmed my suspicions. Staying close to the wall, I peered inside and couldn't believe what I witnessed. Daryl was involved with my wife, and it was shocking. Not only did I see Daryl sitting on a couch with his shirt unbuttoned and his pants and underwear down, but he also had my wife's face in his lap. It resembled a scene from a dark story, as if you were a lord in the mountains forcing a village woman to engage in explicit activities. He looked down at my wife while she knelt obediently performing a certain act. I reached into my pocket and pulled out my phone, sensing that I might need it. I started recording, capturing at least seven seconds of their actions. Gabby was clearly too preoccupied to notice, and Daryl was simply watching her. After obtaining some evidence, I confronted them loudly, shouting, Damn you, witch! Daryl appeared surprised to see me, while Gabby gave me a highly annoyed look on her face. She looked up at me and asked in an agitated manner what I was doing there. I just shouted at her, Damn you, witch! Is this how you treat me? She replied, Can you please just go away? Mind you, she was still holding him in her hand. I retorted with anger, saying to forget both of them while she covered her face, exclaiming, Oh my God. What surprised me was that she didn't appear embarrassed about being caught. She seemed more embarrassed by my behavior in front of Daryl. Following that, I unleashed a string of insults at her, but all she did was roll her eyes and implore me to leave them alone and just go away. It seemed like she just wanted me gone, and the fact that our marriage was over didn't matter to her. It felt as though she was saying, oh well, which infuriated me even more. After hurling countless insults at her, all she could muster were phrases like, please leave and I don't care. I yelled at her, questioning how she could do this to me after claiming she loved me. She shot back, I don't love you like that, okay? Hearing that nearly crushed me, and she repeated her demand for me to leave. I informed her that I wanted a divorce, and she responded in a frustrated tone with a simple okay. After that, I exited the warehouse, got into my car, and drove home. Upon reaching home, I was consumed with anger. I punched the walls and yelled at the top of my lungs. I couldn't believe she would betray me like this. She had become a person I no longer recognized, and I was absolutely fed up with the nonsense she had put me through. As it stands, she still hasn't returned, and I have no idea where she is. I suspect she might be with her sister, having to explain the situation. Whatever comes next, I have irrefutable evidence of her infidelity. I intend to use it in various ways, especially during the divorce proceedings. It clearly demonstrates her irresponsibility and lack of concern for our marriage. It's unfortunate to admit, but I likely shouldn't have relied on Tyrell to inform me about this, as the signs were already present. She only valued the things I did for her, and that's the sole reason she married me. Gabby didn't seek love, she simply craved being wanted. Since Daryl was attractive to her and desired her, they became involved. Relationships like this one usually end in failure because women like her tend to revert to their true selves. I recently purchased a voice-activated recorder, V, which I've only used once. It appeared that all I required was someone who no longer worked with us. People here seemed to believe that I was hesitant to confront my wife, but that's not the case. After discovering my wife's infidelity, I took significant steps to consult with a lawyer and initiate divorce proceedings. Gabby was the type of person who felt entitled. If she were to be married, I spared no expense to keep her content, and she led me to believe that's what a good husband should do. She acted as though I was fortunate because she was a trophy wife, especially considering the attention she received. I bought into it, particularly since she was a devoted mother and initially the good wife. She didn't love me, she only craved the attention and the comfortable life I had worked hard to provide. Another issue was that Gabby always sought attention. This was evident in her love for Snapchat and Instagram. She had a large number of followers, with 80% of them being men. Even worse were the comments on her posts. 
That's why I had to develop a thick skin when I was with her, especially when she posted bikini photos from our trips to places like Vegas and Jamaica. It was now clear that she wouldn't change, despite finding someone willing to take care of her. It didn't matter when she encountered someone she found attractive, he treated her as she believed she should be treated. With everything coming to an end, I had to face the reality of the situation and decided to call my siblings to share everything with them. It was something I didn't want to do, but it was undoubtedly the right time. I called my older brother, who we'll call Ricky, and vented about what had happened, using a lot of strong language. After he asked if I was home, he mentioned he needed to run an errand, but would swing by later. Next, I called my younger sister and shared the news with her too. She gave me a lecture, but suspected Ricky would contact her about it. She said she'd check on me later and hung up. Later, she called back and told me Ricky was on his way to pick me up. She asked about the kids, and I said they were at the movies with Gabby, responsible for picking them up. She wasn't thrilled about watching the kids, but given my emotional state, there wasn't much we could do. After hanging up, I started to doze off until I heard Ricky's car pull up. I opened the door and saw my imposing-looking brother approaching with a bag and his toolbox. Ricky had a tough appearance, having played football in high school and college, and now with his shaved head and beard, he looked like a military veteran. He came over and gave me a heartfelt hug, even though we typically played the tough guy role with our emotions. Tears welled up because we both knew it was what I needed. After the hug, he mentioned that he had stopped at a store and bought new locks for the house. He thought it was crucial to secure the place so Gabby couldn't come in later and take everything. After an hour of talking and changing the locks, we went to Ricky's house. Ricky and his girlfriend were incredibly supportive and did their best to lift my spirits throughout the weekend. My sister, Gina, also came over to talk to me. After reaching out to the rest of my family, I couldn't help but replay the traumatic event in my mind. I hoped to catch my wife confessing or something similar, but the opportunity for confrontation arrived sooner than expected when she admitted she didn't love me in that way. A burning desire for revenge consumed me. I wanted payback for how she had deceived me that day. The urge for vengeance was strong, and I wasn't finished dealing with this situation yet. On that Sunday, Gabby's sister actually gave me a call. Initially, my brother didn't want me to answer, but I had to remind him that my kids were over at Gabby's place. I stepped out of the room and answered the call. After picking up, her sister, who we'll call Christina, asked me what was happening. She mentioned that her sister wouldn't return to the house, but didn't want to explain why. I told her the truth that I had caught her sister cheating on me at my workplace. There were a few seconds of silence after that, then she started denying it and claimed I was lying about her sister. After letting her vent, I told her to hang up, saying I would show her the evidence. She started saying something, but I hung up angrily. After that, I sent her the video and didn't hear from her for the rest of that day. Following that, I spent the remainder of the day trying to relax. When Monday came, I went to work and spoke with my supervisor about Daryl and Gabby. Surprisingly, he provided me with a testimony sheet to file my complaint. While I was completing the paperwork, he expressed his sympathy and asked if I was certain this was happening. Angrily, I confirmed and asked him if he wanted to see the video I had taken. He was surprised and inquired if I actually had evidence. I confirmed that I did. He took back the form I was filling out and said it wouldn't be necessary anymore. He picked up the phone and discussed the situation with someone. After hanging up, he mentioned that he had contacted the manager and asked him to send the video to his email as he would address it when the boss visited the facility in a couple of days. I agreed to this, but also informed him that I wouldn't be coming to work during those days, to which he was just about to suggest the same. A few days ago, Gabby's sister Christina called me back, which surprised me. She said she had talked to Gabby, and Christina wanted me to have a conversation with Gabby that night because the kids wanted to come home. I agreed to take my kids, but expressed my reluctance to talk to Gabby because, in my view, there was nothing left to discuss. She mentioned that she understood Gabby had made a mistake, but believed I should be the more reasonable one and consider the family. Somehow I felt like I was the one being unreasonable. 
I informed her that I wasn't willing to talk to her because she had cheated with my co-worker and caused embarrassment at my workplace. I pointed out to Christina that she had brought another guy into my house and I was expected to act like none of that had occurred. She replied by saying that wasn't true, claiming that Gabby only had involvement with him at work or at his place. I laughed it off and remarked, how can I be sure of that? I mentioned that for all I knew, she might have been involved with Daryl's friends when she was around. Chris got upset and stated that wasn't how it happened. I asked her to clarify what did happen, and that's when she revealed everything Gabby had told her. I regretted bringing it up, especially because I knew Gabby wouldn't lie to Christina, which made it even worse. According to Christina, when Gabby first met Brianna, Daryl was already talking to Brianna, and Gabby informed them that she was there to pick me up. While waiting for me, they started talking and began hanging out whenever she came around. Chris said they became friends over time and enjoyed spending time together during lunch. She mentioned that Daryl began complimenting her, particularly on her appearance, which surprised her but made her feel good about the attention. One day she slipped up and told Brianna that she found Daryl attractive and Brianna informed him about it. Chris explained that after that, he started getting too close to her and making inappropriate comments. When she heard this, she played it off, but deep down she liked him and often thought about it. I expressed my disbelief and asked her why she didn't tell me earlier as I would have put a stop to it. She replied that she didn't want to because she really liked him and found his unpredictable behavior appealing. I inquired about when all of this started and Christina hesitated to tell me at first. However, when I threatened to end the call, she had to reveal the details. She mentioned that she wasn't sure when it started, but Gabby had told her about a birthday party hosted by Brianna's sister. I was aware of Brianna's sister's tendency to get drunk at parties. Brianna had invited Gabby to the party, and she had attended. According to Christina, Daryl had also been present at the party. She mentioned that Gabby was taken by surprise when she saw him at the party, and they spent time together having a good time. Christina asked if he was trying to pursue her, and Gabby confirmed that he was. She explained that they started dancing together, but things took a more aggressive turn over time. I inquired about what she meant by aggressive, and she said he asked her to twerk for him. Gabby turned around and began twerking on him. She mentioned that with the tight leggings she was wearing, it was evident that he was enjoying her twerking and grinding against him. After a while, he began kissing her, and they progressed to making out. Christina explained that they started going out together, and things began to escalate beyond what was acceptable. This raised more red flags for me. She went on to say that when Gabby went to hang out at Daryl's apartment with Brianna, he made advances on her, and she allowed it. Seeing this, Brianna left him alone in his apartment. Chris added that after making out, he performed oral sex on her. Eventually, he repeatedly attempted to engage in oral sex, and sometimes she allowed it, while other times she stopped him. It reached a point where she no longer resisted, and he convinced her to reciprocate. I asked Christina if these encounters happened when my kids were around, and she clarified that everything occurred at work and at his apartment. I expressed disbelief and told Christina that I couldn't believe she had done this to me. She replied that she couldn't believe it either and mentioned that Gabby thought he was skilled and appreciated his wild nature. Christina explained that Gabby initially thought that going down on her would be the extent of it, but he desired more. She recalled a day when he turned her around and pinned her against the couch. She admitted that in hindsight, it was clear that the day had come when he had his way with her. Christina told her that she should have gotten up and left, but she couldn't bring herself to do it, allowing him to take her from behind. I shook my head in disbelief and had to ask once more how in the world she could do this to me. She explained that Gabby had found it all very exciting, and the fact that it was wrong added to the thrill. Christina mentioned that she had always been attracted to his rebellious nature, and when he finally won her over, he didn't disappoint. She noted that he was so eager that she was worried the neighbors might hear them. I could relate to what she was saying because when I was younger, my brother and I had to help my aunt move out of one of her apartments. While we were moving things, we suddenly heard loud noises. 
Later on, we realized that someone in the apartment below us was watching an action movie or something, and it sounded like Vin Diesel or James Bond was living right beneath us. The walls were incredibly thin, to say the least. If Daryl's apartment was as budget-friendly and poorly constructed as my aunt's, then it's highly likely that the neighbors could hear Daryl and Gabby, especially if they were being intimate from behind. She explained that after that initial encounter, whenever he wanted it, he got it. It was meant to be their little secret until Tyrell spilled the beans, showing that he had more courage than they had assumed. Christina started to say more, but I told her that the details about the party and the apartment situation were already overwhelming. She asked if I could at least be the calm and rational one again and have a conversation with Gabby, but I firmly declined. I explained that I would be coming over tomorrow to pick up the kids, but I had no intentions of having a conversation with Gabby. She suggested that it wouldn't work if both of us were stubborn, but I reiterated that she had made a fool out of me and I had no intention of giving her another chance. I informed her of my plans to pick up the kids and she expressed frustration, letting out a groan before hanging up. On that day, I felt really down and I had to work my way back up from that low point. A few hours later, I received a call from an unfamiliar number. They followed up with a text, and I realized it was a co-worker I knew, which surprised me. I was driving at the time, so I connected the call through my Bluetooth dashboard. He inquired about what was going on, and I simply mentioned that I was running errands. He then asked me if I had anything to do with Daryl getting fired, which caught me off guard. According to him, there were two men and a woman in suits who came to our workplace with our supervisor. They went straight to the area where the trucker lounge was located. Hearing this, I suspected that they were checking the lounge to see if it matched the room in the video. Later, he mentioned that about 20 minutes after their arrival, they called Daryl to the office and asked him to gather his belongings. I confessed the truth to my co-worker, and he said he would have done the same thing. He also asked when I would be returning to work, and I informed him that I planned to come in on Friday and work a half day. He responded positively and said he'd catch up with me later. I felt relieved. I made dinner for myself that night, and now my main focus was on the divorce proceedings. The following day was the day I had to pick up my kids, and I wasn't particularly looking forward to it. It had been several days since I had seen Gabby, and my brother Ricky joined me just in case. When I arrived, my kids were genuinely excited to see me. They told me that their mother had been unkind to them and had been ignoring them, so they wanted to come home. Glancing over, I saw Gabby in the kitchen on her cell phone, ignoring me and chatting with her sister. I told the kids to go ahead and get in my car, and my oldest daughter asked if she could bring her iPad with her. I agreed, but Gabby suddenly objected, saying that she had to leave it with her because she had bought it. My daughter was becoming emotionally upset, so I instructed her to wait in the car. When she walked away, I expressed my disbelief that she would act so petty. This led to a heated argument, and I didn't hold back this time. I called her derogatory names, and she retorted by labeling me a snitch for getting Daryl fired from her job. I pointed out that she had previously claimed not to know Daryl that well, and she responded with profanity, telling me to go cry to my mama. She also remarked that I was fortunate she even paid attention to me. She suggested that Daryl and I could have settled things with a fight instead of getting him fired. I retorted that I only fight for real women, not thoughts who don't deserve that privilege. She insulted me, calling me dusty and lame, and declared that she doesn't love a lame guy. Frustrated, I grabbed a glass of orange juice and threw it at her, narrowly missing her. In shock, she retaliated by throwing a fork at my head, which thankfully missed as well. All of this chaos was eventually stopped by my brother Ricky and Christina, Christina's friend who were present. Gabby continued yelling that she didn't want me and kept saying next, next. My brother practically dragged me to the porch to calm down, and once I had cooled off, I left because I had expended all my energy and couldn't fight my brother to get back inside. When I returned to the car, I informed my daughter that her mother had taken the iPad. She responded by saying she didn't care anymore, she just wanted to leave. I couldn't believe the ordeal I had just gone through, and while I acknowledged that I had crossed the line, it still felt good to let out my frustrations on her. 
Right now, my kids are with me, and with the new locks on the door, they will remain with me. I had to gently break the news to the kids that their mother and I wouldn't be living together anymore, which crushed them, though they understood. As I mentioned before, my main focus now was on the divorce papers, and the lawyers I spoke to said the video could be helpful in various arguments. I firmly believe my wife is overly self-assured, and I hope her actions were worth it. If she thinks she can have a meaningful relationship with Daryl, she's deluding herself. Daryl or anyone else, for that matter, is unlikely to commit to her. She's approaching 40 and has many kids, and he's not looking to become a stepdad overnight. If that's her expectation, I know Daryl better than she does. Gabby was merely a conquest for him, and once he's done, he'll move on to someone else. I'm certain that reality will sink in soon, and it probably won't take even a year. At least now I can have some peace of mind, but I still worry about my kids and my immediate family, perhaps even Christina if she ever realizes how foolish Gabby's actions were.